Today's blog is gonna be an introduction into a series of videos I'd like to do about FPGAs and the IoT. And I'm basing this series off a talk that I gave earlier this year at the IoT Fuse Conference in Minneapolis, Minnesota. So the talk that I gave was called FPGAs on the Edge, Some Things Are Better Left to Hardware. So if you've been following us at Alorium Technology at all, you know that we're really big on this idea of hardware acceleration. And in particular, using FPGA hardware to accelerate functions and to accelerate functionality that is difficult to do or slow or just inefficient on a standard microcontroller or even in a processor. And so that is why I gave this talk earlier this year because I do believe and we believe that FPGAs absolutely have their place in the IoT and in the industrial IoT in particular. And we're gonna talk more about that as we go along with future videos and some of the product demos we're gonna be doing. But I wanted to start by addressing this issue of FPGAs and IoT in general. So we're gonna to start today with just a brief introduction. So the title of the talk was FPGAs on the Edge. And what do we mean by the edge? Let's define that for just a moment because it's important to the context of the rest of the conversation. And so if you look there out there, there are a lot of different ways to think about the IoT and what the network looks like or what the stack looks like from the edge all the way up into the cloud. So here's one way to look at it. This is the model that I used for the presentation I gave earlier this year, and it's the model we're gonna use for these videos. It may not be exactly like some of the things you're used to looking at, or these boundaries might be drawn a little bit differently, or they, they're called something different, but this is essentially what we're talking about. And what we're gonna to focus today is at this very bottom layer, which we consider to be the edge. So when we talk about the edge, what we're talking about here is the very extremity of the IoT. So this is out where the sensors live, this is where actuators are, other types of end nodes that are doing very specific jobs. Most of the time it does look like sensors and actuators. So it's either taking data in and feeding it up the chain and up the data link somewhere for, for further processing and aggregation, or it is the actuator level. So it's motors, switches, relays, controls, things like that that are living out there and that data is being sent to to actually do something. And very often right now, those devices that are hanging out there on the edge of the IoT don't have a tremendous amount of smarts in them, or they are powered by smaller microcontrollers, but we believe, and I want to contend through this series of videos, that this is gonna be a place more and more where FPGAs are gonna make sense. And this really has to do with the sheer magnitude of data that's being generated even at these low levels. So let's go ahead and talk about that. Earlier this year, Forbes Insights released a report called Becoming Data Avalanche and How We'll Handle It. One of the quotes from this report is that by the year 2020, it's estimated that there'll be as many as 50 billion devices connected to the internet. Now, if you're involved in this space or in this industry, this statistic is not news to you. This is, this is pretty common knowledge. I don't think anybody disagrees. If you look all over the place, there's all kinds of information about the rate that things are climbing or about the number of devices that are getting connected online all the time. And all those connected devices is what obviously makes up the IoT, the internet of things, whether it's computers or whether it's sensors or servos or motors or handhelds or whatever it is, that is the internet of things. And it's just the exponential growth and things being connected is just really staggering. So that's a fact that probably doesn't surprise you at all. One of the things that you can see with this title is they use the metaphor of a data avalanche. And while I like that idea, I actually think it's not quite accurate because I tend to see it more like a tsunami where this, the thing about an avalanche is you can, you, it's very localized, you can kind of see it, it happens and then it stops and it all comes to rest. I don't think that's what's gonna be happening with the data growth with the IoT. It's more like a tsunami in that as you look out over the water, it's just sort of rising and it's not as clear, not as obvious as you're staring at it that this stuff is rising and it's rising all around you and all of a sudden it's just gonna become a major, major problem. And so while I like the idea of an avalanche, I think that a tsunami is a little more accurate of a metaphor to use for what's happening with the data. And it's because of that that I believe FPGAs or the need to have better processing at the edge of the IoT is gonna become important. You see, the model is changing. Historically, that data was collected at the very edge. It was all just aggregated and sent up into the cloud where it was processed, but it needs to change. There's just gonna to be too much data. There's gonna to be too many things that need to be done at a low level at right out where those edge devices are, where those their sensors are and those nodes are, that to collect all of that data and push it all up to the cloud, in many cases, what needs to be done out there, what needs to be measured and responded to, first of all, can't handle the latency 
that it would take to go up to the cloud, make a decision and come back. And second, the infrastructure probably isn't gonna be there as more and more and more of these devices come online to simply just pull all that data and bring it up to the cloud. No matter how big the servers are, no matter how good our transmission is or how good our data networks are, with this kind of exponential growth, at some point that data is gonna to have to be processed locally. So there's going to need to be smart nodes. There are just gonna be some applications that can't suffer that kind of latency waiting for data to go up to the cloud and come back. It's gonna need real-time response right at the node level and in very many cases with extreme precision or very, very tight accuracy. And in order to do that, you're gonna to need to be able to process a lot of data and make decisions and act on that data very quickly. And that is one of the things that FPGAs are just really, really good at doing. So why FPGAs in the IoT? Well, I'm gonna give you a brief teaser for that and then we're gonna end this video today because this one's long enough already. My entire talk was about 40 minutes earlier this year and we certainly aren't gonna to wanna to do that as a blog post. And so here you go, why FPGAs in the IoT? Well, again, if you've been paying attention to us at all, you know that the reason we put an FPGA on an Arduino clone board in the first place comes down to these first two things, speed and performance. Simply the acceleration you can get by running things in hardware is a huge benefit over doing them in a microcontroller or even sometimes in a processor. So you can get things running faster, you can benefit from the acceleration you get when you're running things in hardware. We've covered that topic quite a bit on this channel and in our stuff talking about Accelerate. The other one is performance. And again, another one that we talked about a lot when it comes to our Accelerate board, when you're able to run certain functionality or you move software from running on a microcontroller and you move that into hardware where it can run faster and more efficiently, that also frees up that microcontroller or that processor from having to run that code. And now it's free to do more stuff. So overall, you increase the performance of your application. So those are the first two, speed and performance. The other two we're gonna talk about are programmability and security. And this really comes down to the fact that FPGAs are reprogrammable and they're customizable, which means you can adapt to changes in industry. You can adapt to changes to protocols. You can adapt to changes to change your security specifications. You can change the functionality of your FPGA and whatever application it's in. And that is a huge benefit to running out in the FPGA. The other thing is it does allow for better adaptation to change in security protocols. This is tightly related for sure to the uh, reprogrammability of it, but it's unique in that it allows you to do some things in hardware that aren't as easy to do or maybe not as effective to do in software. So these are the four things we're gonna talk about as we continue on talking about FPGAs in the IoT as part of these video series. Thanks for joining me here today for this one. Look forward to seeing you soon, bye.